how to add some shadow to text in Clip Studio Paint. Something like this, you've got different, so you've got the main text, got over here, the main text here, that's just a standard text created using the text tool, and then you've got some shadows, uh, pixel layers. So what you need to do, well, I'm gonna start fresh. Well, don't have to start completely fresh, I'm just gonna remove the blurred layers. So there's the text. Now I've got it in a folder. If you want to add it into a folder, it makes it easy to add it into a folder. You don't have to have a folder. So if I just drag that out the top and I'm going to remove that folder. So now I've just got standard text as if I would create it over in this using the text tool over here. Now key panels here, window and tool, subtool, tool property, subtool detail. It's great to have them all in place as well as layer. So that's the key thing. So you've got this this text, I want to duplicate it and add a blur and shadow. So make certain you select it, then what you can do, because if you're selecting that one, it's not going to be much use. You're just going to be duplicating a blank layer. So a layer and then go to duplicate layer. So you've got that layer there. So it's been duplicated. Now that's going to be the shadow. Now what you can do, of course, you can apply a variety of different things. You can go with layer settings, and I'm just gonna change the layer, just change that, because otherwise I'm just gonna call it shadow one. Otherwise I end up, what I do, I start working with one and work with the other, and then before you know it, it's completely. And I'm actually gonna create another duplication just so I can work and create another shadow, because you don't have to have just one shadow. So just quickly go to layer again, and I'm just gonna duplicate that one. So two layers. And they're all again still live. Now this is a destructive effect because once you've applied, you have to convert them, rasterize them, so they're pixel layers. So make certain you've got the text you want before you apply all the various blur shadows, etc. So now I can what I can do, I'm going to go with one of these shadows. I've got shadow copy and shadow. Now for this one, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rasterize it now. So layer menu, I'm going to rasterize the other one as well. So layer and rasterize. And the reason for that is now I can use filters. So I can go to filter menu, Gaussian blur. So I just apply blur. And you see straight away, you can see you've got a nice shadow straight away using that. So click OK, if that's what you want. You don't have to have that. What you can also do before you do anything else, you can do edit and transform it. So you can create some more interesting shadows. So edit menu, transform and distort. And again, distort would not be available if you hadn't rasterized it. You need to rasterize it to get the distort. And then I'm going to keep it around this bit, the T. I want it sort of coming out from that. So, and you could of course use other ones as well. Now avoid going over the edge. So just if you go too far, you'll end off, off the image. And then when you apply effects, what will happen is it won't apply it properly. So you've got this text like that, and I'm just going to press return. So I've got that text there. And now I of course could apply a blur to that one. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you don't have to do Gaussian blur, you could use radial, etc. And you can see you can create that, which is fine as well for a nice blurring effect. However, you can undo that. And what you can do, you can also add like a gradient so you can get a black to white. So you can go down here to the long oh, that's that layer's been selected, go to black, and then go to and you can see them with all these subtool, tool panels. I never remember which one's which. So subtool, tool property, subtool detail. Make certain you've got them all again fire here. Now with that gradient, I'm going with this one, which is weirdly called sunset. Doesn't look much like a sunset, but it's black to white I'm going to go with. Make certain it's linear, and that's what So this one is for, subtool detail. Go over here, linear. And you don't have to, of course, you could use radial. But uh, do not repeat as well and then just apply it. However, if you do that, you'll notice what happens. It applies it to layer above. Not much use, don't want that. What I want is to select that text. So, shall I say now, so, saying something completely rubbish, it actually applies it to the whole thing, that layer as well. Actually, some, most of the time I actually have it set so it creates a new layer. In this case, it doesn't. However, complete aside on that one, what you can do, you can right click on the layer and you can go to selection from layer, 
create selection. So now it's selected, you can see it's selected. So if you apply a gradient, it doesn't apply it everywhere because otherwise it just goes every single place. Now I don't always want that, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So now just simply apply it like that. You can see it fades away and you can vary the position. You don't have to do it from the start. You can do it maybe halfway along, maybe stretch it out like that. So you can have it fade slightly, you just vary it. Just try it, different positions like that. I think that's reasonable. You just want, I'm, in this case, I just want the T to fade away. And then of course, select menu and deselect. Now you can see there's an edge there. That's slightly, but it's you're going to blur it. So go to filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And then of course that, uh, if you do it reasonable, you can see it literally disappears. So you've got this is some, and it's just nicely like that. So that's a great way of creating a nice shadow effect. You have some shadow to type or text. But of course, I did actually have this other one, this shadow one here. So I can work with that one. And what I can do, I can move that, of course. Now what I can do, don't have to rasterize it. You could rasterize it, of course, you rasterize it later. But what you can do, you can edit and transform. And if you don't rasterize, so you've only got options to rotate scale. And I'm just going to go quickly scale. And the key thing again is just to make certain you don't go over the edge, because I'm going to blur it. And if you blur it over the edge, it will not work properly. So I'm just going to make it resize a bit. Just like that. And press turn. Now I'm going to rasterize it. So, because I can't, if I go to filter, you'll notice the blurs are not available. So make certain you rasterize it, layer menu and rasterize. And again, that's that one, shadow one. This is always the trouble when you've got multiple layers, that you suddenly might end up rasterizing the wrong one. It's always nice to have a live type, which is the one right at the top. And you can see that little A there to make certain you know that it's type. So now what I can do with that one rasterized, I can go to filter, and blur, and again, I could use motion blur, radial blur, but I'm going to go with Gaussian. Very, very simple, and I can blur that. And you can see, you can obviously vary it. Don't have to go too strong, maybe make it very subtle, or maybe a lot of blur. Press the turn. And you could do all kinds of, and you could recolor it as well. You don't have to go with black or gray. Could be a colorful gradient, depending on obviously the lights I mean, that are being applied. So you can, Modify that. And also what you course can do, because it's a layer, you can go over to layer, you can go up to the top here, and you can just change it so you can make it fade away. And you can do the same with the other one as well. Select that one, make certain you select it, and then just again, just fade it away again. So you can make it a lot fainter. And you can just vary it in your, and now because I say it's what you can do, you got here, you got all these there. What you can do, you can add it to a layer folder. And that makes it easier for moving things around. Now you can do that right at the start. Actually during my test runs of this, I actually did created that before I did this, but it doesn't matter. So what you can do, just go over here, layer menu and new layer folder. And of course you might not want to move all the layers in. So I'm just, I'm just gonna move those ones. They're the ones I want to move in and then they're all in that single folder. And then of course what you can do, you've selected that and you can move it around and they will all move around together, which is really useful. And of course you can always rotate this design. So you can always still apply effects to that. So there, scale, scale and rotate, rotate, just rotate that design if you want to do that. Scale it down, so on and so on. I'm just going to undo that. Don't want to do that. But that's what you can do as well. And of course, you can also apply effects to the whole thing. So blur. And again, in this case, you have to, because you've got that live text, you have to rasterize the whole thing. So, which is reasonable, of course. You can just go to layer and you find, of course, you can't rasterize a folder. It'd be very nice if you could. However, what you can do, you can, of course, go to that and rasterize that. So layer and rasterize. Now, once you've done that, filter, still unfortunately you can't do that, so you have to do them individually. There's some things that you think yourself would be nice if you could do that, but you can't. So if you want to, just make certain you just apply the effects, obviously that one to that, and filter and distort, and maybe do ripple. 
maybe that's a bit too extreme. But you can then, of course, go to the other ones and apply exactly the same ripple effect as well. And you can see you can create nice rippled text with shadow, obviously the shadow effect as well, and so on and so on. So you can see you create a whole variety of different designs using this approach. It is a pity, unfortunately, that it can't do the uh, old folder, the whole thing. That would be so nice. Like smart objects in Photoshop, it would be really nice. If you combine them all into one, then you could apply effects to the whole lot. And they're all done equally at the same time. However, hope you found this tutorial of interest. Always adding new tutorials about Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, Affinity Photo, Painter, Critter, Rebel, and probably a few other ones as well. If you've got any comments, any sort of things, what you'd like to me slightly do better, things that I didn't explain very well, please, please let me know. Always put in some, add some comments, always appreciated. Then I can obviously maybe do another video and then, or maybe add some comments back to discuss it as well if I, you know, if I can help. That's the key thing, because sometimes I don't know every single feature of Clip Studio Paint. So anyway, hope uh, you liked it. Dislike or like, always appreciated. That's always great. Thank you much.